In this video, I will provide an example on how to do linear regression. Before you watch this video, please make sure that you have watched my other video called Linear Regression. This video follows a very commonly used data set called Auto from several regression packages. We will estimate the regression model with the dependent variable MPG or miles per gallon. And for independent variables, uh, for the simple linear regression, we will use the car weight. And the independent variables for the multiple regression would be weight, price, and foreign, whether or not the car is foreign. So we have data set on cars with about 26 observations. And this is the model that we will be estimating. You can download different programs and the data from my website and follow along. So the goals for this video would be to estimate a simple and multiple linear regression, to plot the regression line, to interpret the coefficients and their significance, estimate the predicted values for the dependent variable, and to calculate the residuals. And once we do this in the software packages, then these are the results, and I have written written them down here so that you can remember them and follow them along. So here's the data and I use the scatter plot. On the horizontal line I have the x variable uh, which is car weight in thousand pounds. And on the vertical line I have miles per gallon. This is our dependent variable, a y variable. So here we have our x1 variable and here we have y variable. And these are the actual values for uh, the y variable. And as you can see from this uh, plot, we have a pretty well behaved data and we can see that there is already a negative relationship. So if we were to plot a line that is close to all the possible dots, it will probably go somewhere right here. So this is the data set. So now we would like to estimate a simple linear regression model. So this will be equal to y equals beta 0 plus beta 1 x1 plus u. That's how the model would look like. And x1 would be the weight variable, the independent variable, and y would be the dependent variable mass per gallon. So once we estimate this model, this is usually the table that is provided to us by the software packages. So we have one independent variable uh, weight. And intercept is this, um, uh, it's the estimated coefficient for this parameter. So here the, the regression line equation would be equal to y hat equals b0 plus b1x1. So notice that instead of beta, which are the unknown parameters, now we have b, the estimated coefficients. And the way we write this equation, we pick up the coefficients from the output and this is the slope on the weight, we put it right here, and the intercept is this coefficient, we put it right here. So now we have the equation line, uh, and we can, we can draw this line here. So you can see, and the way to interpret this is that we have a negative slope here of about 5.53. This means that for each additional unit increase in car weight, which is measured in 1,000 pounds. So say if we have an increase from a 3 right here to a 4, that would be a 1 unit increase in X, we would have a decrease in Y of about 5, which is from about, let's see, 23 to about 18. So that would be the decrease here. So notice how this is 1 unit for X, but this 5 units for Y Visually, it's kind of it's kind of smaller, so don't confuse the different um, measurement units for both of these variables. Here we have a one unit increase in x, and here we have five units, or 5.53 units decrease in y, and that's how you interpret this um, regression regression line. So notice that these dotted value for y, these are the actual values. This is the scatter plot that from that we had from before. And these are the fitted values here, uh, right on this line, because we cannot predict an actual value here. The predicted value would be right here, right on the regression line. 
and the difference between the actual and predicted values this vertical line right here that would be the error uh, in in this case and we cannot predict the error but we can estimate the residuals afterward and see how they differ uh, when we change um, for all different values of x several other things to notice here and we will talk more about this is these are the coefficients these are their standard errors. If you divide the coefficient by the standard error, you will get the t statistic. And you will have to see if the t statistic is inside or outside approximately from minus 2 to 2 and to see if these coefficients are significantly different than 0. And the p-value for that, if it's less than 0.05, we would have significant coefficients. And these are the confidence interval. Notice that that confidence interval does not contain 0 and therefore these are significantly different. So we have coefficients that are significantly different from zero is what I see from this table here. Now we would have the multiple linear equation here and in this case I have also included the ANOVA table. It was available before but I just skipped it. So here is, here is also the ANOVA table. So these are the coefficients as we had before. These are the standard errors and so on. So here we have three independent variables, weight, price, and whether or not the car is foreign, and that's the intercept. So notice that coefficient here that was minus 5.53. Now it has changed a little bit to 7.12 when we included other independent variables, and that's natural. You can still do uh, tests for um, coefficient significance and you can define the coefficient by the standard error to get the t-statistic and then compare this t-statistic to the critical values which is approximately minus 2 and 2 and see the p-value if it's less than 0.05 means we have significant coefficients or you can look at this confidence interval and see if it contains the zero or not. If it doesn't contain the zero, this means again we have significantly different than zero coefficients. So in this case, this, this coefficient still looks pretty significant to me and the p-value is less than 0 0.05. Okay, so um, let's go ahead uh, and then interpret the significance for these two coefficients here. And notice that the p-values are not less than 0.05 and also the confidence interval here contain the zero inside and therefore we have coefficients that are not significantly different from zero so we don't interpret really the magnitude we're just saying that these coefficients are not significantly different than zero okay so now let's look at the ANOVA table here we have several sources of variation the model or the regression, the residual, and the total. And these are the sum of squares. This plus this equals that. Degrees of freedom is the number of independent variables. We have three here. And number of observations minus one, we have 26 observations minus one is 25. And this is the difference of these two. So the mean squares are this number divided by this is this, this divided by this is this. And the F statistic would be the mean square uh, of the model and the mean square divided by the res the mean square of the residual these two numbers divided so that will be the number 15 that we have here and if we look up at the uh, at the f distribution and find the critical value we would see uh, we would see that number but here is given the probability um, that uh, the well, <laughs> here's kind of written a little bit strangely, but this is the p-value. The p-value is the probability that the f-statistic would be greater than the critical value for the f-statistic. And here we have that this probability uh, is very, very small. It's, it's close to zero. So therefore, we have a significance here, which means that all coefficients are jointly significantly different than zero. So you want, the, you want the regression model that this value here is very, very small because this means you have uh, significant results. Next thing to interpret is the R square, and in this case it's 0 0.67, which means that 67% um, of this regression is explained 
67% uh, of the total variation is explained by the regression and the rest is due to error. The adjusted R square is smaller and it adjusts for the fact that we have more than one independent variable and that is 0.63. Uh, so that's still a very good good fit that we have here. So um, again, these coefficients you interpret it in the same way that if weight is higher by one unit, which is the corresponding to a thousand pounds, then the y, y, the dependent variable, would be 7.12 units lower in terms of miles per, per gallon. That's how it's measured. Uh, so this is how you interpret the slope coefficient. Okay, I think we have everything here interpreted in this table for the multiple linear regression. So what I'm going to do now is summarize the previous two results that I showed you in summary tables that I usually use um, for the rest of uh, the videos. And this is how typically regression results are reported in journal articles. So you can see them listed here and typically they include the star. Star means that the coefficient is significantly different from zero at the 5% significance level. So here we have um, this coefficient is significantly different than zero and this one is. And this is one model. This is the single linear regression because it only has weight as the independent variable. This is the multiple linear regression where it not only includes the weight variable but also the price and foreign in here. But they're not significant and they don't have stars. So again, the interpretation of these coefficients is that for cars that have one unit of higher weight corresponding to 1,000 pounds more, this is associated with the reduction of 5.5 miles per gallon using the single, uh, the simple linear regression. And this one using the multiple linear regression, we would have a reduction of 7.1 miles per gallon, holding all else constant. And we have that the other um, coefficients are not significantly different than zero. Now, when you do this for a paper, sometimes uh, or oftentimes you include either the statistics or the standard errors below the coefficients in parentheses right here. But for the purposes of just this class, I'm much more interested in whether or not the coefficient is significant, not how much it is significant. So I typically don't report standard errors or t-statistics for the rest of the materials. But um, you should include those uh, when, you have, when you're writing your own paper. So this is how to estimate and interpret um, simple and multiple linear regression. So um, now that we have seen how to do that, please join me in watching the videos in how to do that in one of the three software packages that I teach. Thanks for watching.